Hey, I want to quickly share with you a small part of an amazing expert session we had this week in the Persistence Hub. Oliver Drotboom had joined us as a guest speaker and we talked about the concepts defined in domain-driven design and JPA and how they actually fit together. All members of the Persistence Hub can, as always, watch the recording of the entire session in the archives. So if you're not already a member and want to get access to all expert sessions, monthly Q&A calls, monthly coding challenges, and all my video courses, make sure to visit persistencehub.com and join us today. So at the beginning of this session, Ollie and I tried to set the scene and give a rough overview of all the concepts relevant for that evening. So we talked about entities, value objects, aggregates, aggregate routes, and how all of that actually fits together with DTOs, embeddables, and entities in the JPA world. And that's the part that I will show you now. So enjoy and see you in the Persistence Hub. Oli, tell us something about the DDD concepts. What do we have? Yeah, there? so I mean, fundamentally, um, the book is like split into two different uh, parts. Like one is the um, called uh, strategic design, which is about like, okay, which bounded contexts you build, like which how to basically split up your domain and in, in, into individual parts so that you can actually build uh, either separate systems for those or like modules in a, in a single system. Um, and then there's this, this other half basically of the book. And actually the, the one that the book starts with is about what Eric calls tactical design, which is essentially a set of stereotypes that you, that you find in your code um, that he defines and it's not like a, 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 a completed set. So it's not by 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 far not um, the, the, it's not the only concepts that you could have in your applications, but he, he defines a couple of them that um, allows you to capture uh, like the essence of the domain um, in, in, in certain, in those, in those stereotypes, right? It starts with value objects, which is basically an expression of a, a simple value that doesn't have any kind of identity. Uh, things like an email address, a color, um, an address maybe, right? So stuff that is more domain specific. So that's where the domain driven part comes from, but it's usually implemented in applications as, or we have implemented as primitives, right? An email address, a string or something like that. And DDD basically says, okay, you, you rather want to uh, have dedicated concepts for those in your applications in in, um, in, yeah, in code, basically classes, types for that, right? Um, the next step is, is entities. It's basically stuff that has identity. So something that you can actually refer to uh, by their identity. And what's also associated with that is that the th entities usually have some kind of life cycle in terms of like regarding your application. Um, when I'm not, not, not talking technical life cycles yet, uh, but um, in terms of your application, uh, you, if you have, if you think about a customer or something that you manage in your application, it can be created, it can be uh, deleted, removed, deactivated. So it can actually be moved through different states, and that's kind of just um, uh, that's basically the concept of an of an entity, right? Um, and the final the final thing is uh, an aggregate, which is a cluster of of entities. And we're going to discuss those in quite detail today. Um, so what Eric basically uh, points out here is that it's usually a, a, a set of entities that you would want to um, apply some business rules upon. For, let's, we're going to stick with the example here of an order that has line items. And we want to, uh, what's the English word for Mindestbestellwert? Torben, help me out. Um, minimum. A minimum order value. Probably. Minimum order value. Let's, maybe let's maybe there's that. an easier word for that, but yeah. I don't know. It's it's just fine. So um, what's going on here is that you basically have th that list of line items in an order uh, has to adhere to a business rule. And uh, what what the aggregate basically does is it it defines an entry point into that model where you say, okay, I access the order as a whole. Access in terms of we're not talking data access yet, but just I get hold of the order as a whole. And then I can add a line item to the order. I can remove a line item to the order. And according to that, it will change its state internally, right? So it allows you to basically detect that 
uh, by removing that line item, you basically uh, fall below the threshold of the minimum order value or not, right? Um, that's kind of that's kind of the idea that you have a place or a concept where you can actually define these business rules. And the, as I said, the aggregates are a cluster of entities. So there's one of these entities uh, is becoming the aggregate root, and it's the one that you kind of that's the entry point into the entire arrangement. So for the order with its line items. Um, and potentially other related entities, we would have, let's say, the, the order class is basically the aggregate root. Sometimes these 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 terms are uh, used interchangeably, but um, that's kind of that's kind of the idea. So um, a cluster of entities with a single entry point into into uh, business operations on it. Yeah, and on the JPA side, the whole thing is where you could say simpler, but that. That isn't exactly true because, um, as you can see on the side, we don't have concepts like aggregate and aggregate root on the on the JPA side, and that means we don't have any higher level of abstraction where we could define something like a minimum order value, um, at least not not naturally. What we have on the JPA side is we have value objects and DTO uh, that are usually used uh, and implemented as DTOs. So that means a value object is something that we get as a result from a database query. But that result is then mapped to DTO object, which is not managed, but fits the requirements of a specific use case. So it's rather independent of our database structure. And that well, fits the value object concept of DDD to, to some extent, um, but you already heard uh, Oli talking about um, more domain-specific types. That is something that, that we don't have in, uh, in our mapping when we are using a DTO because it's not part of the mapping. There we would maybe use an embeddable um, in, um, in our entity mapping. And then we have the concept of an entity in JPA, and that is pretty close to the concept of an entity in domain-driven design. So an entity has um, an ID in some form and a life cycle, a rather technical life cycle. But if you look at an entity, then um, we not only have this technical life cycle as it's defined by the JPA uh, specification, like an entity gets persisted, um, and it can then be in uh, state managed or can get removed and has the lifecycle state removed there. No, we, we also have another level of, of life cycle of an entity because usually if you store data in a database, it becomes a record in a table and the values in that record change over time. Um, you might change your name, you might uh, change uh, the de delivery address of an order, you might add or remove line items, or these kind of things. So um, they are the, the entities have a life cycle similar to the one defined in DDD, but again, we are lacking here the, the concepts of aggregates and aggregate roots.